we will talk about uh, today's sermon, Such Companionable God. And I would like to start from one legend or from one story. One day, St. Augustine, a bishop and theologian of 4th century, pondering by mystery of the Holy, uh, Holy Trinity, and he walked along the seashore, and he saw a boy digging a hole in the sand and pouring water into it, which he scooped uh, uh, scoop up from uh, and the, sur um, the surprised bishop asked the child why he was doing this. You can imagine that, yes? He had small, digging small hole and try, try to scoop up some water from there. And the boy answered with, I want to scoop the whole sea into this hole. Grinning to himself, Augustine began to explain to him that this was impossible, but he heard the question from him. How are you trying to exhaust the inexhaustible mystery of the Lord with your mind? And after this, boy, the boy disappeared, leaving the embarrassed theologian on the seashore. Today we will talk about very important belief that we have. We will talk about God. Yes, we will talk about unity in God. And we will talk about nature of God. And you know, for the past decades, the centuries, and people try to explain the nature of God. Yes? We know some believe in some, some things, handmade things. Some people believe uh, in some signs. They tried to put God in some box to give their own thing they think he is. But when we open Bible, my friends, the information about God, yes? You agree? With me or not? Or the writers of the scripture do not discuss the question of the nature of God. Much of the biblical information about God reflects God's activity in saving man from sin. This is the main or key truth that we have in the Bible. Much of the biblical information about God's activity in saving man from sin. sin. The Bible describes the relationship between God and his creation. It emphasizes the biological nature uh, of this relationship, which clearly indicates the personal nature of our Almighty God. God does not appear in the Holy Scripture as some impersonal force, yes, permitting this world, uh, or as an abstract absolute, yes, but God reveals himself as being in relationship with his creation. Moreover, God is showing us someone who wants the relationship and wants to communicate with his creation. This very, I believe, very important point to keep in mind when we talk about God. Although divine revelation doesn't support uh, this perception of God, there is no detailed uh, and systematic, uh, systematic teaching of this matter uh, in the Bible. And this is not surprising for us, my friends. The Bible is not a textbook, yes, of systematic theology. You will not open... I remember when I started my school in university, one of the first, um, uh, first subjects 
or for one of the uh, first points that I got, it was introduction in theology. And when you open the book, step by step, you see history of theology, how it was formed, or some details, some tendencies, philosophy, what... Uh, but Bible, this is not about that. The author of the Bible only describes the experience of interaction between God and man in the history of salvation. This is really important, my friends, to remember always. It is in this experience that God reveals himself to man. It is expressed razor in this paradoxical, paradoxical way. When we are trying to compare some different Bible verses of the scriptures that present God, what we see on one hand, we see that Holy Spirit present God one yes. Yeah, there is only one true God. And we will see that in the future. But on the other hand, the same scripture affirms that the divine status of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It should be emphasized that Christianity is a monotheistic religion, which means belief only in one God. Do Christianity worship three gods? One God. This is an axiom. Anyone who believes that Christianity teach, be, teach be, God is mistaken. There is only one true and living God, God of revelation who reveals himself to man. And this God constantly emphasized his uniqueness. The unity of God in the Old Testament is affirmed in many different ways. And first, first of all, it is an expression of the face of Jewish people in the famous Shema Israel. And today, our sister Emily, she read that Bible verse. And this is our main Bible verse, yes, for us today. This is the Shema Israel, one of the prayer, one of the main prayer of uh, Jewish people. And here of oh, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. And since the God of Israel is the only true God, the very first commandment of the law of God warned the people, what? Not to have other gods. Remember first commandment? From book of Genesis chapter 20, and we will read. But what is important, God is above uniqueness, my friends. He is beyond of have an understanding. That's why we are called to follow the commandment. And we have that commandment. You shall love God with all your heart. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your might. Amen, my friends. And the pro pro prohibition of idolatry in Israel is also associated with affirmation of faith in the one true and living God. And I would like to read with you this first mm, commandment from book of 20, Eschadus chapter 20, to read with you that Bible verse that will remind us a very important thing. I am the Lord your God who brought uh, you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have Two gods. No other gods before me. Amen. Amen. It is enough to recall how the prophet, and I, and I would like to open, uh, if you, will, yeah, if you will, will open chapter uh, 10 of the book of Jeremiah, you will find I interesting discussion and, war, and words, especially um, sarcastically, how he sarcastically describes man uh, uh, pagan cult practice. And he called it empty doctrine. And, what, and all of that uh, part, of, uh, or, uh, part of his uh, reflection or God's revelations that he had, he summarized with the, with the statement. And we have in, in verse uh, 10. And I would like to open and read whole 
um, uh, hold a verse. If you would like, you can open too, but I, I help you with my PowerPoint representation. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. You see? But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The doctrine of unity of God can be traced in the New Testament. Yeah, we don't have enough, uh, a lot of time today to bring all, all Bible verses. But for us, uh, it's really important to see that, that moment when, uh, when we have, or what will emphasize or what will impress uh, was in, in God's nature, especially what I like to talk about. And what I would like to open in book of uh, a New Testament, if you will open book of uh, um, James, yes, well, we have Apostle James in the context of salvation by works ask the question, do you believe there is, that there is one God? Remember answer? You do what? what? And this is, this is interesting, and we have that in the Bible in uh, New, New Testament. And Apostle Paul also affirms monotheism when he says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Again, we see one God here in a book uh, of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Despite the monotheism affirmed by the Holy Scripture, in the same Scripture, my friends, if you will open Bible and read chapter by chapter and uh, book by book, we encounter number, numerous witnesses pointing to the fullness of the divine status, uh, status of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How, my friends, can these biblically, biblical testimonies be reconciled? Yeah, we have one God, but we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit sorry. Does Bible contradict itself when, on one hand, uh, it affirms the oneness of God, and other, it speaks of the divine divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? You know, I was thinking is... Uh, mathematically, mathematical, uh, built on math ma mathematical lo logic, yes? When we have, when we talk about one, when we talk plus one, when we talk plus one, we have what? We have three. And this is really logical for us and understandable, yes? But for, it's unlikely to help us to answer um, this question. For the biblical writers, or for biblical men, God was perceived by them not as an abstract entity, or simple, or invisible, but a personal and interactive being who has relationship within. And I would like to highlight that. He has a relationship within. Let us pay attention to the most striking moments in the Holy Scripture which, which testify to the complex nature of the God. First of all, from the first pages of the Bible, what we have? Attention is drawn to the social or expressed in relationships, social character of the God of Revelation. This manifests itself in the use of the plural noun. And we have two main words, yes, Elohim and Adonai. El, this is a one God, yes, or one. This is God. And Elohim, this is a plural. And, and both of these words, they translated as a God. And researchers have tried to explain this unusual form uh, of nouns refer, um, referring to God 
uh, the so-called majority plural, plural, sorry. Some group, and we have, and I am familiar with this group of people, of monotheists cannot accept the idea of uh, triune God, yes? They believe that plural, or that, uh, that idea of plural from use, here you use the same way that in English we have and we use you. When I talk about you, yes, or if you will open, for example, your um, call to the, uh, to the queen of Br uh, British, uh, how you will call, your royalty, yes, your highest, if you will call. And similar, their, uh, uh, similar ideas they have w about that plural that we have in the Bible when we talk about Elohim or Adonai. That uh, the author used respect when talking about God. However, my friends, it is well known that the plural is used in the Hebrew language for such concept as sky, earth, water, etc. Words that we have in English in singular, yes? We have water, singular or not? The singular or plural for now, water or sky. We use in singular, yes? Yeah, we can say some skies, but we, we have, we use singular for, for, uh, for main, yes, for basic uh, uh, of that word. Words that are known to us in the singular. So why do Hebrew use plural? They have sky and water and the earth in a plural. And why they have it? For Jewish consciousness means, uh, sky for Jewish consciousness means many luminaries and stars. The earth many particles and water many drops. It's the reason why they use that word, uh, word water in, in plural. From the first pages of the book of Genesis, my friends, the prophet describes the activity of God as a social being. And if you will open first Genesis, uh, first Genesis chapter, four, uh, first chapter and verse 26, what we have? And God said, yeah, let's, let's read together. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God, then God said, let us, what? Make man in our image and after our likeness. And this is really interesting. And God said, let us. You know, I see, uh, I even highlighted this, um, these words, yes, or uh, this is really important that have the change in plural, yes. Okay, one gets the impression that there is some kind of council, yes, that we have um, in God that precedes the creation of man. Similar example we can find in chapter 3. If you will go to Genesis chapter 3 and uh, open verse 22. Can you open uh, with me? Yeah, I have Bible verse on the screen, but I would like to read with you. It was after fall, and Moses records the words of God, which sounds like, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, in knowing God and hero. After, after One more example. After the flooding, uh, or after the flood during the construction uh, of the Tower of Babel, uh, God intervenes as the plans of the proud builders. Remember, if you will open Genesis chapter 11 and verses 6 and 7. Again, what we have here, the 11, Genesis chapter 11, verses 6 and 7. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will known be impossible for them. Come, 
let what? Us. Let us go down. And there is confusing language so that they may not understand one another's speech. One more example I have, and, and that example I like uh, more than others. This is a book of Isaiah, chapter 6 and verse 8. And this is, uh, we, we can see the play a singular and plural uh, is really interesting in that Bible verse. Book of Isaiah, chapter 6 and verse 8. Remember, it was moment of call, yes, of prophet Isaiah. And I would like, uh, it was revelation of heavenly sanctuary. And what we see in book of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Who she will go for us? Then I said, here I am. I love that. Yes, here I am said, I am, uh, I am. And fairly serious argument in defense of God as a trinity can be description, my friends, uh, of the uh, description of the creation of man as a social being. Yes? If we will go and jump back to, verse, uh, to Genesis chapter 1, and we will read again, uh, we read verse 26, and now we will read verse 27. So, God created man in his own image, and he, in the image of God, he created him. Two mans, <laughs> two males, I have, oh, sorry, two males, no, male and female, he created them. And this is really interesting uh, because what we see in the Jewish tradition, man is represented as a being in a relationship, as a unity of man and woman. Neither man nor woman, taken in isolation from each other, constitute the integrity and completeness of human nature. Remember when uh, in second chapter, if you will open second chapter of book of Genesis, what happened with Adam when he was not able to find Eve? <laughs> and he didn't know uh, about her existence. She even did not exist, yes? What he felt, remember? He was alone. It was something that worried him and this is what we have in the Bible, and this is re really interesting. The, we see the social essence of man clearly testifies to the social essence of God, in whose image and likeness man was created. And here it is important to pay attention to, to the social, to, um, so to speak, nature of divine unity. An interesting verse we read today, and this is our main verse, but I would like to read it again. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, we, uh, we have, yes, all Israel, yes, Shema Israel, we read it. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord is one. And here, and that word one, this is the Hebrew Ihat, or Ihat. He had, yes. And, fa, and that uh, emphasize no, and that word emphasize not so much the uniqueness of, uh, of God as the eternal unity that exists in him, the closeness of relationship. You know, it is enough to compare. This with the text of book of Gen uh, Genesis chapter 2, 24. Remember what we have there? This is the last Bible verse of Genesis chapter, uh, not almost last, yeah, uh, the verse of chapter 2. Therefore, man, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Again, same word we see 
he has. Lord is one. And these two, ma, ma, um, female and uh, uh, male and female, yes, or husband and wife, they shall become one flesh. And again, we see that eternal unity that exists, yes. And the love that binds a man and a woman in marriage overcomes multiplicity and allows them to be perceived as a kind of unity that contains the secret of completeness of human nature. The same intimate unity of inner life of God can be judged by the famous words by Apostle John. And I would like to read it with you. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. First John chapter 4 and verse 16. What we have. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. Love presupposes relationships. And this means that in God himself, there is a relationship built on love. Otherwise, the words of the apostle, God is love, would not make sense at all. And dear friends, we are worshiping our God, not just today. And our God who is greater than our understanding. He is great. He is almighty. He is our creator. He is out of our understanding. Even when we try to put him in our personal box or our um, uh, maybe church box or something. But at the same time, he is not abstract. He search for a relationship with his creation. He wants a relationship with such sinful person as I, as you, my friend. You can imagine his unlimitedness, yes? And his sociability help us to touch a mystery of his nature. When we start, and I, this is my, one of the main uh, call for us today, to think about his sociability. Because that helps us to understand his nature, even to touch to that mystery. May God help us every day to be mesmerized by him and answer to his companionship. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Lord, our Father, you are our creator and you are our friend. We really enjoy to, to have a relationship with you. This is our life. This is that help us to go forward. This is what gives us hope today in this world. Our Lord, we are so, we, I would like to praise you for that revelation that we have in the Bible. That you, the Almighty Lord, reveals you as God who likes relationship with me. Our Lord, please help us always mesmerize with you to see and seek relationship with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.